Welcome home, everybody. You're watching Legacy Television. I'm Jeremy Pearsons. I know many of you watching this broadcast, you've been tuned in and a part of Legacy Television, maybe with us for months now, maybe since the beginning. And I realize maybe some of you watching, this might be the first time you've tuned in. Either way, we are so blessed and honored that you're spending some time with us and spending some time in, with God and in his word today. That is what is most important. And on the broadcast today, we're bringing you part three of a message we call Fit for the Fight. This message came from Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. Sarah and I had been invited there to minister. And every time we go, there's such a rich anointing, powerful anointing on our time there. And I think perhaps this time was the strongest we'd ever experienced. And we really felt like from the Lord that we were supposed to put this thing on legacy television, make it available to you. So if you've missed uh, the first two parts of this message, don't worry. They're available on our site. You can get it at pearsonsministries.com. But be blessed by this today. Enjoy it. Worship with us at the end of this broadcast. Then I'll be back to pray with you before we go. Verse 18. Abraham, who contrary to hope, in hope believed. That means when there was no reason to expect a child, still he expected a child. I like the way even the King James says that. Who hoped against hope. The word hope means expectation. It means what you're looking for. What you're looking ahead towards. And there was no natural reason to expect what God told him to expect. There was no reason that to, for him to think that his body could produce it. Why? Because of the experience he's already had. He's got practically a hundred years of living under his belt with no kids. So if his future, watch this, if his future was based on his past, then there's no reason to expect anything. And that's where people are living right there. They're afraid of the future, don't want to talk about the future, have no vision for the future. And what did the scripture tell us? People without vision, they perish. Why would somebody choose to live without a vision? One main reason I believe is this. Vision always creates a need. You hear me? Vision always creates a need. I think somehow when we've heard the, the, the strong teaching on faith that we've heard and about God supplying our need, I think somewhere in the back of our mind we translated that to, I'm, I'm moving towards a place in my life where I never have a need again. But the problem with that is if you don't have a need, you have no vision. Because vision, especially vision from God, always creates a need bigger than you're able to reach in your pocket and meet at the moment. But I have found God loves that. I have found He has no qualms whatsoever with you walking by faith. It's His favorite part. This is His favorite part. Quick survey. Who in here would say right now in your life, in your job, your marriage, your ministry, whatever it is, your faith is absolutely stretched further than it's ever been before. You're believing bigger than you ever have. There's greater need. You're stretched unlike you ever have before. Anybody besides, look at his hands all over this. Leave your hand up. Leave your hand up. I can tell you something with confidence and absolute assurity right now. God is more pleased with you right now than he's ever been in your entire life. Because faith pleases him. Now, he's loved you the whole time, but he loves this faith stuff. This is what makes him happy. So that vision creates a need and people get a glimpse of what God's called them to. And they look at where that is and then they look back at this place and they're trying to somehow figure out how in the world am I going to get from here to there? And they're looking at the distance between the two and they're going, there's no way, there's no way, there's no way. And they choose instead of pursuing it, they choose to ignore it because they're afraid of the need it created. And they think there's no way I could ever meet that need. But you aren't the one to meet the need. He said, I'll meet the need. Trust me to meet it. You just start walking towards your plan, towards my plan for you. Are you with me right now? Where are we here? Hope, expectation, looking at things ahead. Abraham didn't have any natural reason to have any expectation of a child. And still he expected one. So that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not, he said, being weak in faith, 
Did you notice that? Not being what? Weak. Weak. So what are we talking about here? This is somebody who is fit. This is somebody who's in shape. Not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body. So you know right there, that's what weak faith does. That's what weak faith does. Now, faith is present, so you know what? He heard a word. He's got a word from God. You're the father of many nations. That's the word. But had his faith been weak, he would have said, I hear you, but... And then start looking at everything around him. Looking at, not from, at. He would have, he would have let down his eyes and looked at the condition of his body, at the condition of his wife's body, at past experience and how they failed at this over and over and over and over again. How they tried like so many people month after month after month after month to conceive a child and, and just finally said, okay, this is just not going to happen. And he's got who knows how many decades of that as his experience now. And weak faith would have said, I hear you, but what about all this? But he wasn't weak in faith, was he? He didn't consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old in the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was what? He was what? Strengthened. Strengthened. He wasn't weak. He was strengthened. He wasn't weak in his faith. He was strong in his faith. He was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Look at this out of the Message Bible. Verse verse 19. Abraham, this is the Message Bible, Abraham didn't focus on his own impotence and say, it's hopeless. This hundred-year-old body could never father a child. Nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. Next verse. He didn't tiptoe around God's promise, asking cautiously skeptical questions. What did he do? He plunged into the promise and came up strong, ready for God. Look at what it says. Keep going. Sure that God would make good on what he said. Verse 22. That's why it is said Abraham was declared fit before God. That's how he translates the word righteous. Fit. I can use you, God said. You're useful to me. I can do something with you. He was declared fit before God by trusting God to set him right. Was he weak? Was his faith weak? What was it? Strong. Strong. Series of questions here. Help me out with this. What's better, stronger or weaker? Okay, if the answer is stronger, you can't say it like that. You have to say it like, (laughs) what's better, stronger or weaker? Stronger. Stronger is better, right? What's better, physically stronger or physically weaker? What's better? Stronger. Stronger. In your body, is it better to be strong or weak? It's better to be strong. What about uh, in your mind? Is it better to be mentally weak or mentally strong? What about, what about your immune system? What do you want there? What do you want going on in there? You want something that's weak or something that's strong? What's better? Strong, strong is better than weak. Um, what about financially? Now, don't answer too quickly here. Because God may want you strong in all those other areas. See how silly that is? What's better, to be financially weaker or financially Strong. Stronger is better. Stronger is better in everything in life. Stronger is better. Stronger in your body. Stronger in your mind. Stronger in your spirit. Stronger financially. Stronger relationally. Even stronger coffee is better. Everything, everything is better stronger. I would say with the exception of certain smells, everything is better, stronger. 
Come on, what's better, weaker or Strong. stronger's better? And when you're strong, you're fit. You're in shape. Now, I joked a little bit ago about working out, but the truth is, I, I, about a year ago, I really, I got after it a little more. I've always been like this kind of skinny, scrawny guy, and I kind of just got to the point where I was like, I'm done being weak. I'm done with, with my family telling me, and this is what they grew up telling me, you've got a great build for golf. <laughs> That's sad, man. That's sad. You've got a great build for golf. That's a nice way of saying, dear God, do not play football. Whatever you do, you are going to get squashed. And so really about a year and a half ago, I just kind of got done. I'm done being weak. I'm done feeling weak. And then I got after it. I was working out hard. And uh, if I were to bring my little guy, Justice, in here, who's six years old, stand him right next to me, there's a big difference between where he is and, and where I am. But the fact is, he's got all the same muscles I've got. And I've got all the same muscles he's got. The difference is a couple of things. Number one, time. Just time. Growing, developing. Or two, I've used mine in a different way that he has. Now, several weeks ago, Sarah and I were in an airport in Vancouver Canada and we were walking through and we were up on a high level and I looked out over this glass and I saw this guy down on this lower level. Massive, massive dude. Just muscles everywhere coming out of everything and evidently he knew it. Tank top and short shorts. <laughs> like, okay dude, we get it. You're big. Seriously, at an airport? Put something on, man. Come on for the rest of us. But if you stand him next to me, we got all the same muscles. But his have been used in a different way. Right? See, the disciples said to Jesus, increase our faith. And he's like, no. You've got faith. Use it. See, they were asking for something they thought they didn't have. Maybe you feel weak in it. Maybe it feels like your faith's weak. But the first thing you've got to come to is done being weak. You've got to come to the place where you say to yourself, to your husband, to your wife, we're done with this. I'm done being weak in my faith. I'm done being weak in my mind. I'm done being weak physically. I'm done being weak in my immune system. I'm done letting stuff just walk all over me. From this day forward, I am getting Stronger. Why? Because stronger is better. Stronger is better. And there is a new fire that's been lit under me. In these last few months, I'm ready. I want to be stronger in every area of my life. I got a mandate, fit by 40. Fit by 40. Now, if he was talking to me about my physical condition, I mean, we can get that taken care of in, you know, six to nine months or something like that. But he's given me these next three years, and he's not just talking about this out here. That might be part of it. But his change is coming from the inside out. Jeremy, I need you stronger in your faith. I need you stronger in the Word. Stronger in prayer. Stronger in your walk with me. Stronger in your authority. Stronger in revelation. Stronger in your preaching. Stronger in your example in front of your children. Stronger in your marriage. Stronger in your ministry. Because stronger is better. And I know it's coming. Something's coming. Something's coming. And I've got these next few days, weeks, months, years to get ready for it. Because when it gets here, I want to be able to say, I'm ready. I'm ready. You can use me. You can use me. Abraham, what did God say to him? I can use you. I can use you. Let's begin to close this. Psalm, go there with me. To the book of Psalms. Look in a couple of places. Chapter 31, and then we'll turn the page right over to chapter 27. Is this helping anyone at all? You have to say yes. Don't you like it when preachers ask these questions? Can you take a little more? Yeah. You've heard that one from here, I think. Every time there's a guy in the crowd, yeah, go on, preach, woo! For every one of those guys, there's six 
going, oh my gosh. <laughs> but when it's Brother Keith, I'm the guy going, come on, keep going. I just felt like I need to say that. Chapter 31. <laughs> Look at verse 24. The psalmist writing and he said, be of good courage and he will what? Strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Be of good courage and he will, say it again, strengthen your heart. Turn over a couple pages or back a couple pages to chapter 27. Notice what he said in verse 13. I would have lost heart. Other translations say, I would have fainted. My heart would have quit. I would have given up. I would have thrown in the towel. I'll say it to you like this. I would have run out of endurance. Endurance is a huge indicator and sign of fitness. You ever been out of the gym for, I don't know, a couple of kids gone by? a few years and then you decide I'm getting back in there and you go and day one you work out you work stuff you forgot you had and the next day you're feeling it and the day after that you're really feeling it and you worked out for what 20 minutes <laughs> I know that at one point this has been several years ago I was like man I gotta I gotta do something I gotta work out and Sarah had these DVDs uh, of this lady who would do these workouts. And she, it was her and this two other ladies with her. So I, I put the DVD on and, and I'm working out. And this, it's not very long to begin with, but like 10 or 12 minutes into it, she's like, come on, ladies, you can do it. And I'm like, no, I can't. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't. <laughs> What's the problem? Mike's shaking his head at me. I told you I'd be transparent tonight. What's the problem? No endurance. When you've been out of that for a while and you're getting back into it, your endurance is small. Your endurance is short. But the more your fitness grows, the more your endurance grows. Well, the more spiritually fit you are, the more spiritual endurance you have. Strength and endurance go together. I would have lost heart. I would have run out of endurance. I would have quit unless... Unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Most people quit if they don't see it. But he said, it's not seeing it that's sustaining me. It's me believing to see it. It's my expectation of it. I do this because that's what that word means. It means outstretched neck, red hot, earnest expectation. I'm expecting something. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And it's my believing that that's sustaining me all the way through it. He says, wait on the Lord. That's what that word wait means. It's not, it's not arms folded, foot tapping, idly, passively. Wait. Well, I'm just waiting on God. No, you're not. That's not what that word means. Wait on him. Expect in him. We read there in chapter 31. He said, those who hope in the Lord means the exact same thing. Hope in the Lord. Wait on Him. Notice this. Be of good courage. That's what He just said a moment ago. And He will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I like these two verses because the psalmist here, David, he gives the example of what's happened in his life and the instruction that came out of that. This is what happened for me. That's why I'm telling you. You see that? I would have lost heart. What would have become of me if I hadn't trusted, if I hadn't believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? So I'm telling you, you wait on him. You expect to see it. Be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Of all the things that we've identified tonight, all the arenas in which stronger is better, this is the most important. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. This one far outweighs any of them. To be strong in your heart. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to be weak physically and want to be stronger. Maybe made weak through even sickness and desiring 
to be stronger. I know what it's like to be weak financially, than, weaker than you want to be, and the, the desire to be stronger. I know that. You know that. We've all experienced that. And we get stirred up and we get excited when we find out how to be stronger in those areas. But I'm telling you, more than any of those, this is what you need. Above any of the others, you need a strong heart. And all the others, good. And you do need it all, but not before this. He'll strengthen your heart. Why do you need a strong heart? Because a strong heart will last longer than a weaker one. Have you noticed that most of the time you don't go from physically weak to physically strong the next day? Have you noticed even in dealing with symptoms of sickness in your body that that outside of a miraculous moment and that happens and continues to happen and we're believing for it to happen. But... But you know as well as I do that most of the time there's a work going on in you and you're getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger over time until all of that is flushed out. Have you noticed that? As much as you would want to be instantly stronger, it doesn't always happen that way. Have you noticed that it's not always overnight that you go from financially weaker to financially stronger? Proverbs warns about that. Even folks that inherit large sums of money or win large sums of money, just because they got a lot of money doesn't mean they're financially stronger. It will probably just expose whatever weakness they have. So these things, they, they take time and oftentimes more time than you want them to take. So what is it that's going to get you from where you are, maybe weak or weakened, to where you want to be strong and strengthened? How are you going to get from here to there? What if it takes a long time? Ask Abraham. How did he get from not having a child to hearing the promise of God and what was it, a decade or more later, finally experiencing it? What's going to get you from where you are to where you want to be? It's going to be a strong heart. It's going to be a strong heart. Because there are going to be times that you're going to feel like giving up, feel like giving in, feel like you have exhausted all your strength, all your energy, everything you've got physically, everything you've got financially, everything you've got mentally, and you've poured it out and you've just left it all on the court, as they say, left it all on the field, didn't hold anything back. Well, what's going to keep you in the game? Heart. Heart is what's going to keep you in the game.
Our God does not change. He will not quit. And he cannot fail. Let me say it to you again. God does not change. He will not quit. And he cannot fail. It's because he's faithful. He's faithful to his word. He's faithful to his promise. And he is faithful to you. Praise God. Uh, Over the last several weeks, we've been bringing this message fit for the fight to you. And the foundation for this message came out of the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 where Paul wrote to this young man in verse 21, and he talked to him about being sanctified, fit for the master's use, and prepared for every good work. In the book of 2 Corinthians, we we find out about the grace of God in chapter 9 that abounds towards us. Why would God's grace abound towards us? So that we'd have all sufficiency at all times and have the ability to give to every good work. Be prepared for the work and have the ability to give to every good work. And, and being prepared to give is a big thing. Are you ready? Are you prepared? I mean, what if God spoke to you right now and said, I want you to invest in what Jeremy and Sarah are doing at Legacy Studios? What if he spoke to you about the church you're involved in or another ministry you're receiving from and said, I want you to invest there. Are you prepared? Are you ready? If you're not, you need to get ready. And I wanna make this opportunity available to you right now. If you're prepared and you wanna invest in what God is doing through this ministry, our heartbeat is to serve this generation with the word of God, teaching them to live by faith in the day of grace. Legacy Television, we are endeavoring to preach to everyone, everywhere, every day. And if you wanna get on board in that, if you're prepared right now to sow, praise God, it's very simple. All you have to do is text to the number 28950, and text LTV and any dollar amount the Lord puts on your heart, that's gonna go right into the outreach of Legacy Television. And you and I are gonna be partners in this thing. And we are gonna be in agreement with you for God's very best in your life. Thanks so much for watching Legacy Television today. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.